Hey everybody, Wonky Puppy here bringing you a brand new type of video. In this video, I thought I'd impart some of my experience with, uh, with Stardew Valley down to people who are trying it out for the first time, and I cover kind of the, the top 10 mistakes that I see new players make in this game, uh, or that I hear about as well, and uh, things like the Discord. Uh, so, let's go ahead and get started. Um, number one, the top mistake that I see people, see people make when the, they first get their farm is they just go in and chop down all of this grass. They chop down all the rocks sticks everything including the grass um and that can definitely come back and bite you make sure you save a area for this grass to grow now i'm talking about this long grass right here this grass is what your animals your cows your sheep your chickens everything are going to want to eat in the future once you get them um, once you have a silo, you can also chop that down and get hay. So this grass is very important. If you don't have an area to grow grass, um, and you don't have enough grass once you have your animals to, to get hay, then you're going to have to buy hay from Marty at like 50 gold per pop. And that's just awful. You definitely don't want to get into that cycle. You That'll really cut into your profits. So I'm not saying don't chop down any grass. You definitely do need to clear small areas to grow your, your farms. But make sure you leave at least some area to grow grass. Uh, and when you do that, go ahead and clear out all of this other debris. This, uh, These rocks, these shrubs, these... Um, I don't know what these little grassy plants are. All this stuff, this will all um, this will all block the grass from spreading. So make sure you have a nice open area for it to spread and you don't chop down all the grass. But like I said, you do have to chop down some, so don't be afraid to chop it down. But don't chop all of it down. That's what I'm saying. Number two for you all is um, on day one, make sure you make a chest and make sure when you go out uh, around town, you don't carry around all of your tools. Um, that's a really silly thing to do. Uh, so for, for some reason, uh, new players don't seem to, to get this initially. I didn't get this initially. I carried around all my tools for way too long. Uh, but chop down some trees, get 50 wood, place a chest down somewhere. And once you get into it, um, like you, you don't need to carry around your axe. You definitely don't need to carry around your watering can. Once you get a weapon, you won't need to carry around the scythe. Yeah, definitely just make sure that you don't carry around your tools. You don't need to do it. It clogs up your inventory and it's, um, it's just not necessary in any way. Alrighty, and tip number three for you guys is don't sell everything. Make sure you keep at least one of every type of thing that you pick up. Um, so like this, you can sell one daffodil, you can keep the other one. Uh, make sure that you keep at least one of everything that you pick up, everything that you grow, everything that you find, um, with the exception of like artifacts. And uh, the reason being is because you, you're, you're going to need them for things like quests and gifting and um, the community center later on once, you, once that gets unlocked. Uh, and if you don't already have this stuff, they're really hard to go ahead to, to find when you want to find them. And um, yeah, it's just a really good idea to keep one of everything just so that you have it when somebody asks for it. Makes things much, much easier. Alrighty, and tip number four for you guys is don't let your precious crops get eaten by crows. So if you're not familiar, you should be using scarecrows. You can't do this right off the bat. You've got to get through your first harvest of parsnips of the, the seeds that, um, that uh, what's his name? Um, Lewis gives you. Uh, but yeah, you should you should leave room for scarecrows. Scarecrows cover a, a eight tile radius all around them you can see exactly what their their coverage is on things like stardew valley farm planner uh, i'll leave a link for that down in the in the description but uh definitely plan your farm out. make sure you have all of your farm area covered by scarecrows otherwise crows will come and eat your precious crops every single day so don't forget that make sure you're using enough scarecrows and make sure that you, you don't waste your precious money feeding crows Tip number five, when you're early on in the game, don't make your farm too big. If you don't have sprinklers to cover your crops, you have to manually water them every day. And when you don't have an upgraded watering can, this takes a long time. You can waste half of your day every day very easily doing this. And you may not even have enough energy to cover too big of a, of a farm. So uh, don't make sure that you don't do too much. Make sure you keep the size of your farm manageable. Watch your energy level. Watch how long it's taking you every morning to take care of your crops and make sure you keep a good balance because if you if you have too much going on then you'll spend every single day doing nothing but watering and that is no fun at all Alrighty, tip number six for you guys is don't miss out on these worm spots these artifact spots um i see so many people in the game they just don't 
know what these are for so long. Uh, but look at that. I just found a lost book in the library. Uh, so that that's that's one of the things you can find. You can find lost books, which means that those will show up in the library. You can find artifacts, which you can donate to the museum, which unlocks a whole ton of rewards. And you definitely need to do if you're hunting achievements. And um, otherwise, you just get things like mud and stone and stuff like that, which is fine, but not what you're actually looking for. Um, but yeah, make sure you're you're hoeing up those wiggly worms every time you see them, because that is how you get most of the artifacts in the game. All right, tip number seven is uh, don't ignore this quest board. Uh, so here we've got a, a quest from Lewis who's asking for seaweed. I can fish that up out of the ocean. And saying, please bring me 160G on delivery. Lewis will be pleased. So there are several uh, achievements that are dependent on you completing quests. But also, whenever you get an item and deliver it to somebody, it will increase your relationship points with them. As well as give you a premium on um, on selling that item. So like 60 gold isn't that much. But if I were to catch seaweed or if I had some in my chest and I were to sell it, I wouldn't get 60 gold out of that. That's a great way to, to make some money and to increase your relationship points. So once you have the item, you have to track down the person who asked for it. And once you give it to them, say, like, hey, is that the seaweed I requested? Thanks so much. Let's see. Here's what I owe you. Okay, so you get some relationship points with them. And let's see if I got anything. Okay, so he's, he's you don't get a full heart, but you get something. And um, yeah, in the journal, you'll get your reward. Uh, make sure you collect this from the journal. That's the only way you actually get the gold. Right, tip number eight is don't forget people's birthdays. So this calendar here at the front of Pierre shop shows you who's who everybody's birthday is uh, each season. So today is Lewis's birthday. Uh, when you give somebody a gift that they uh, a gift on their birthday, you get eight times the relationship points that you normally would get from from giving them a gift. And if it's something they love, that's almost three hearts you get right out the bat. A birthday gift, that's very kind of you. I love it. So I was at zero relationship points with uh, with Lewis before, and I was at no hearts with him. Um, I was at no no hearts with him, so I did that, and look, I got th almost I got three full hearts from that. Uh, I had a, a tiny bit of, um, of relationship karma with him before, so uh, it rounded up to three, but you get like two and a half. And um, another, another bonus is if you... If you give them something of a higher quality, like a, a gold star or an iridium uh, quality uh, item, and it's something that they love, you get a, a bumper on top of that the base relationship points you would have get uh, gotten. I think if it's iridium, you get like a 50% bonus, so that's definitely worthwhile. Make sure when you're gifting, you give people high quality gifts. Tip number nine for you guys is to make sure that you're checking in with the TV every single day. Uh, so there's some shows on there that you definitely want to pay attention to. Every day you'll see the news. Um, that will tell you the weather, what's going to be the next day. Sometimes it gets it wrong, but almost every time it's correct. Uh, there's also Wellwix Oracle on there, which will tell you your luck. So let's look, let's look at these real quick. So the weather report. Uh, so you see, it'll tell you, okay, it's going to rain all day tomorrow, so you can use that to plan your day. You can use that to plan your tool upgrades. You, it's it's super helpful to know what the weather's going to be the next day. There is the fortune teller. Uh, Wellwick will tell you what your what your luck is. So it, this is the best luck. The spirits are very happy today. They will do their best to shower everyone with good fortune. That is the best luck that you can get. Um, so there are certain activities that uh, when you do them, they're dependent on luck on how well things happen. One of the biggest ones is mining. I, I normally don't even go mining if my luck's bad, because I know that the chances of me getting a ladder drop and progressing further down the mine is so low, you get better chances of good things spawning when, you're, when your luck is good. So there's that. And also, on Sundays and Wednesdays, there's a show called The Queen of Sauce. Uh, the Queen of Sauce gives you recipes. So you initially, like, you can't cook anything right now. You don't have a kitchen. You can't do that until you do a house upgrade. But if you miss these recipes, it's hard to go back and get them later on in the next year. Um, sometimes you have to buy the recipes. Sometimes you have to get them from your friends. But you get a whole bunch of just free recipes from the Queen of Sauce if you turn into her, tune into her um, every Sunday and every Wednesday. It's definitely worth doing it in the long run. 
Alrighty, and the final tip, the biggest tip, tip number 10 for you guys is to pay attention to the crop schedule. So don't plant your seeds too close to the end of the season. Like right now, I am on uh, the 28th of this season, the very last day of the season, and that means tomorrow is going to be the first day of the summer, and I have a whole bunch of crops that aren't ready to harvest and um, that, that don't live in the next season. So what happens when you have crops that are in the ground and go from one season to the next is this right here. All right, fresh new day, fresh new season, and bam, all of my crops are dead. Uh, so this is awful. You have to clean all of this up and you don't get a dime from any of these uh, crops that you wasted all of this money putting in. This is the worst case scenario, just a ton of money right straight down the drain. So when you're planting your crops, make sure you pay attention to how many days are left in the season and how long those crops take to grow. I did this in my first playthrough of my first farm, and I was absolutely devastated. It took me forever to catch back up and, and get my money built back up. So do not do this. Make sure that you pay, you pay attention to, to growing your farm correctly. Alrighty, well that does it. Those are the 10 biggest mistakes that I see new players make in Stardew Valley. If there's anything that I miss, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with everything going on on the channel. Check out the other series, and until next time, I will see you all in the next video. Bye!